Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to another tutorial in uh, camera and lens repair. And this time I will try to figure out how to work with a um, the focus problem in uh, in AFS Nikkor 28 to 70 millimeter and 2.8D. Um, there might be also some other details that could be could be very useful, <clears throat> but maybe there are some broken parts in here. Hmm. Well, I don't know yet, because I haven't been into this one. <clears throat> so uh, we need some tools, handy tweezers, really good, and this is a special one i paint some plastic coat clear plastic coat on the end here so it acts as a sticky uh, tweezer <clears throat> which is very useful when taking off the uh, flexible cables cable out of the connectors it's very useful hmm. some dentist tool we also need or can be very useful some of them are modified and uh, yeah and of course the very important thing is the crosshead screwdriver because this is a Japanese uh, lens and I think it's also manufactured in Japan yes so they need the Japan industry standard so we also need to use a JIS, which is a uh, the screwdriver for those uh, screws in here and many other electric electronic equipment. This is a brand called Moody Tool, and I buy those uh, screwdrivers on uh, iFixit.com, and it's it's very good, but I prefer to use the uh, my maybe it's just because it's shorter. But um, to use the German brand called Vera, and this is, huh, it's a PH00, yeah, but I have modified it by filed and grind the, uh, the very pointed tip, so it actually fits very good. I mean, I think it fits even better than this one, but, well, that's just my meaning. So uh, it fits so perfect in the screw that it, it would work per very good. <clears throat> now some some uh, cotton buds and uh, isopropyl alcohol, 99%. Oh, you could also, I mean, you could use some Eclipse because I have an idea of what, what's going wrong in here. Uh, to reassemble it again we need some Loctite 222 you could also use the 243 um, thread lock it's it's also good but the other one is just uh, a lighter um, thread lock now Let's jump into it. See what we can do. So <clears throat> the problem is that I will show, put it on my camera, which is a Nikon D3S. So I probably, hopefully can show what's going on. So the point is, that if I try to focus, I mean, if I focus on infinity or something like that, oh, should turn on the camera, it works pretty good. But if I put it down here, or maybe even more, it will, it beeps a little. I have the noisy noise. But the problem is, it cannot go any further. But if I move it a little, it 
So, there it goes. And if I move it to uh, move to that side, it will not work. But if I go over here, okay, something happened. So, it looks like there is something between or around. It has really some problem here. Maybe it's just the light. So if I put it there, it will not focus. There, there, okay, something happened. Okay, there. If I go up there, it will work. But if I go up here around, it might be a little tight here. S something is not working at all. But if I go around here, it will probably focusing. Yeah, there it is. So, there it begins. So there is something. There, The issue is around 5, 2, 3, 5 meters or so. <coughs> so it might be something that is coming out of place or whatever but the problem is <coughs> uh, as I see it if I move the focus ring I can feel there's some resistance here and it clicks in the uh, somewhere in the mechanism but here it goes fine when I come up to there, there, there is some resistance about there. So I would guess, without knowing, I have been, I haven't been into the lens before. So uh, I might think there is some, maybe some brush, focus brush. I don't know, <coughs> but uh, let's take a look. We'll just open it. And see how to what we can do there's one thing about the screws on the back here the black should sit where the white dot is that's one thing and across from that this screw you do not need to unscrew it's only the black one here the next the next and the last uh, closest to the uh, lock hole here so uh, of course I need to unscrew the the contact here and the tube here also. And there are some screws around. Of course first the uh, two with the contact bridge that need to be unscrewed. Oh, one important thing. This one need to be on. Just in case of something, <coughs> I need to have the anti-static thingy. Now, <coughs> continue with all those tiny screws. And also the tube, the inner tube here, sits with one screw there, there, not this one not necessary to take that out and of course the last one is over here so by it's good with the uh, an antique I mean <laughs> the magnetic magnetic screwdriver uh, it makes it so much easier there are some areas in here in the lens where you should not use the magnetic screwdriver. And it's where the uh, focus encoder magnetic uh, strip. So I will just get that out here. So there it is. Plastic. <coughs> I need to put that in place <clears throat> and then 
we have the okay we'll begin with the black one it's pretty long screws <clears throat> They have some kind of thread lock on, but it's not a problem in this lens. There could be some, in some lenses they're put way too much amount of thread lock, especially the older one. <clears throat> but this lens is not a problem. And not this screw, but the last one here. So actually the mount is only sit by four screws. So out with that. And now it should be possible. You see there is also a tiny tiny set screw here. And um, it's only uh, hold the this uh, ring here around <clears throat> it doesn't really do much but uh, and of course put the lens to 22 because it will make it much easier before you take out the mount you see the aperture down there is fully closed at aperture 22 so it should be possible to take it out without any problem. Uh, I would guess so. The aperture pin here, down here, that goes further into the aperture mechanism. So out with that. So here we have the whole mount in one piece. Oh, put it away. Uh, there are some spacers here, and that's for the uh, when they make make the adjustment uh, for the um, focus kind of. I think it's a kind of uh, micro adjustment. In this case, there are here there are three. There could be more or less or thinner or thicker spacers in your lens some lenses they might they maybe have only two I don't know now <clears throat> then we are uh, just take care of this ring right now not lift in it um, because we need to take off the um, the focus, I mean the <laughs> the zoom ring here, we need to take out. But before doing so, there are two screws down here. This one and this one. And uh, we need to unscrew those, I would guess. I think there might be some... <clears throat> some uh, issues about that because there is a contact brush here that it's connected to the pin here so I need actually I need to unscrew those two screws but I also need to take out the <coughs> the uh, the well the brush here and before I do so <coughs> I simply make a scratch on it just to be sure where it should sit before I take it out so I do something like that And it doesn't really harm the the 
the um, the lens, but it will make it easy for you to put it back in again. So set a mark here. That's one place, and the other one is down here. So, now I know exactly where this pin should sit when I put it back in again. Because uh, if I just unscrew the ring here, it's not enough. Oh, is it? Let's give it a try. There are two countersunk screws here, as I see it. Tiny. And the next one. So okay. Well, it's not really necessary, but it was just in case. <clears throat> it was difficult to see. So, um, but this pin, I mean. The brush here are uh, now loose at the moment, so it might be a good idea to do it anyway, just in case of something. But to take out the uh, zoom ring, one need to to move it counterclockwise, and then the brush will fall a little, but uh, I think I will just take it out, uh, I'm not sure it happened right now. Well, I need to put the uh, the zoom ring over to where it can not come any further, and then lift it out. So. <clears throat> That's it. And here we have the the brush, and it should be possible to take out. Take care of the tiny pins. And this is a okay. This is a fork that is connected to a pin down here. This uh, plastic thingy here, down here. That actually moved the uh, the inner zoom mechanism. So now <clears throat> the next thing is to take out the the um, contact. I mean the yeah the contact for the manual and manual manual auto, uh, and it's only set by two screws. And there should be some wire in there. Two or three of them. Just put things in. So. And what happened in we take out there? Yeah, okay. Now two wires here. So there is one, the or the white. That is, uh, if we look at that way, is closest to <coughs> the back of the lens, and the orange is closest to the towards the front. Just so we have that that in mind. And I will just uh, unsolder it by uh, using my, my solder iron here. Uh, 
and they maybe said they should be unleaded uh, uh, solder but um, I think it will, will work with the uh, with the just ordinary solder <coughs> So now we can actually continue with taking out uh, the uh, three screws around here. This one, this one, and this one. To take out the whole housing here. And take care of the, uh, the wires here. Maybe this one can... Is that a kind of thin plastic? Mm -hmm. It will be interesting to see what's really going on in there. Okay, all for that. And take a care of, uh, of course I have looked into the repair manual, but take care of when, uh, when take off this housing because there is some spacers um, in here. There's actually two. There's a wave spacer around here and there is one above that with our somewhere around here but keep a good hand down here because then we will look into the lens I only have the repair manual which you can get in in different places on the internet. Now, then it should be possible to lift out this uh, and take good care of the wire that you should in here. <clears throat> so, and it's free. And then have a good grip in the front. And then hopefully this one can be taken out. I mean, it should be possible or not. Hmm. What's going on here? I mean, it should be possible to to lift it out without any problem. Okay, it might come out. That was strange. Looks like there is some connection. Okay, one push on the side and lift it out. So this is how it looks. <coughs> and uh, then I talk about the waved spacer here. And there isn't any else. So there's only one wave spacer. I thought there was more, more but there isn't. Okay, it makes things more simple. And then it should be possible to take out the focus ring. Hopefully 
without any problem. Yes, it goes here. So it is. Okay, there are some there are some springs here. Okay. They do. They have the pressure on the um, on the internal, especially around here on the edge. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> now let's see what's happening here, because I think it's very interesting to see if this can be get to work again. Where is the focusing encoder contact? There's something in here that might be a little sticky or somewhere. Don't know when it will... Where is the contact? <laughs> This is the zoom ring, but where is the, uh, where is the, the brush for the, uh, let's see what's going on here. It sits even more in here oh yeah sits up here where did it go something is kind of can you hear the noise So there is something going on here. So I might take off the this ring here. It sits with uh, three screws. One there, there and there. So and uh, just uh, for make it easier when putting things back in again. I'll just put a mark here. And then it should be possible to lift this out and uh, get deeper into the lens. This is old thread lock, kind of. I have no idea what one will expect in here because okay there off oh, for that you see the old thread lock here which is the white stuff on the screw now <coughs> To take off this uh, this ring here, I would think that it is uh, <coughs> this pin here will fall out. No, it comes out. Okay, good. This one comes out here, and uh, mind the uh, flexible cable here. But lift out this. So it is. Well, that's great. Now, then we are deeper into the lens and uh, hopefully there will be an idea of what's actually miss, makes the, the 
Nicely nice. Okay. Things happen here. You see, when I move this, uh, the focusing ring, I mean, this ring here, something will move inside here. So it looks like there has been some, maybe the lens has been dropped or so. But it looks like there, there has been some pressure on here because um, if I press on here, it might be, if I press on here, yeah, you can see a press on the flexible circuit board down here. Okay, we take a closer look. So, come on, out of focus. If I move it, there. If we look down here, so men when uh, moving the focusing mechanism. It will press on the on the actual flexible cable. So what's going on here? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, let's see if I can get that all off. Okay, there are two screws here that might hold the the whole. Um, the whole uh, circuit board around here. What if I could just take a kind of a plastic thingy or so? Something here. Just a, a visible dust pin. But what if I press down here somewhere and push on the because it looks like the sticky double side sticky tape let's see what's happened uh -huh. so it looks like their their double side sticky tape has come is getting old I guess and therefore the the circuit board here on the back has uh, loosened and uh, it makes contact to the brush in here so it might be there is something there See, it doesn't have the click click sound. So maybe it's the error. <laughs> that would be fine. So I give it a more pressure on it. On the other. One has to be careful. Of course. Is it possible to to boom, 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 take out the this one side here? Yeah, it is the double adhesive tape that's come loose. because it's old. Mm -hmm. Well, interesting. If it works. <coughs> um, I need to find a tool, so I just take a break. We'll be back in a moment. Now, let's uh, continue. Uh, I found out that uh, we need to desolder some wires, thin wires. Now there's uh, here 
this part of the circuit board there's one black here and a red one and a yellow okay out of focus there's an orange here and a blue and a brown and over here <coughs> there is a black one here and a blue and a white and that's actually all we need to desolder and uh, then it should be possible to take out the whole circuit board so I can uh, come into the other side and maybe put in new sticky double side tape so uh, let's do some solder work it's not that much <clears throat> And the red one here and the yellow and then the orange and the blue one and then the brown one and then we are almost done so and then the last three, which will be a black one here, so, and a blue one, and the last white one. So. And now it should be free, so, and I also draw a little, oh, might be difficult to see, but so it is. So this is the, the, um, how the solder is done. So, but uh, let's see if I can get this off. I unscrew those two screws here and then lift out the whole circuit board assembly. Mm -hmm. They have used some, some thread lock. I mean, maybe it's nail polish or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it loose. Loose and out. So, and uh, now just need to put things here. It should right along. So, now it should be possible to lift this part out. I have no idea, but uh, hopefully, it will happen. There's some kind of uh, sticky tape here. Oh, I see. Well, there is one here for the MR head. So I need to take out, I mean, detach some of the tape here. The electrical, not the electrical tape. 
right there. So pull it off gently. So there. And then this flex cable comes there. And I think they okay, it's also connected to here. So I also need to take off this one here. something like that and of course on the the cable for the I mean the flex cable for the MR head here also need to be take out it can just sit there so now those uh, two pin on each side need to be pushed out gently so and also this flex connector here and now it's free so uh, I will just use my handy tool here, homemade, <laughs> but really good. I just need to repaint it now and then because it comes, gets old. So now this one should be possible to do so, and it's free. I don't think there is any more of those. I'm not sure. But this one needs to be lifted up here. And then, is it possible now to get this uh, off? Hopefully, it is. There isn't any other. Doesn't seem to be. Okay. Oh gosh. Of course, there's sitting one tiny screw behind the, I mean, between the two components here. So I also need to take that out. Uh, that was, hmm. Take care of the, <laughs> the components. Out with the screw. Wow. Interesting. So now I would guess all wires are off and then this one should come out as I see it. Hopefully. Take care of the flex here. So, and go between there, and then comes out, and hopefully one piece. No! <laughs> there is another one. Oh gosh. There is one here. Mm -hmm. Well, surprise, surprise. there and the sticky tweezer so that's it and then uh, 
all the circuit boards come, should come off without any problem. Take good care of how they are. And here we are. This is how it looks inside. This is the zoom, zoom function and how it, it works. That doesn't seem to be any problem there. This is how where the um, circuit board was actually when moving the focusing mechanism. This brush here was uh, pushing against the circuit board, which uh, we can hopefully see here. And it should be this one here, this circuit board. Because uh, when looking at it, the sticky double side tape is not really that sticky anymore. So um, I would guess if I can, if I can, hopefully, dig under it. And uh, oh yeah, you can see here probably the stickiness is not really that stickiness anymore. So it's really worn out. But I'm not sure how, if I can get it fully off and put on new tape. One has to be really careful when uh, working with those. So I think I will just use some good glue and uh, add in here. But it could also be dangerous because uh, it contains um, as a drone. Hmm. It's not really good. But I think I think it's possible. Oh, okay, to pry off. So here you can see what what's going on. It's not really that sticky anymore. So I will, uh, if I can, hopefully pry off the, the old tape and simply add new tape. And I will use some some curtain. I mean, made for curtains. It's extremely sticky. Double side tape. And uh, I think it will make it, I mean, the curtains will not go off, but uh, so I think it will, it will make it very good. So I will just uh, do some, <laughs> take this off. And of course be back in a moment. So yeah. And now I will just uh, continue. I have cut a piece of uh, double adhesive tape and this is just a roll of uh, extremely sticky double side tape for carpets and it, it will last for a long time. So I will just add it in here. I take away the old stuff as much as I could and uh, yeah, I should put it on the circuit board here so then I think it will be pretty good oh, extremely sticky Do a gently pressure on the circuit board and then pry off the uh, 
the protection tape here then pry it off come on <laughs> extremely sticky and then press it gently on here and I think it will be pretty good for that hopefully it's a bit thicker but uh, it shouldn't be a problem for this uh, kind of work see also the other here that have old can be uh, sticky tape it has it has lost the the stickiness during many years so this is how it looks right now and then I think it should be possible to put this in and then we have a working autofocus I mean hopefully <laughs> And remember all those, uh, I mean, the two, the two cables here around. And we could also take a look at the, uh, this is the, the magnetic tape around here. As we can see. This is the magnetic strip all the way over here. And the the head, it works as the same as a tape recorder with the information um, on in the uh, magnetic tape. So don't even think about using a screwdriver close to the magnetic tape. You will probably damage. Now, let's put things on again, in again, on again. I don't know, <laughs> and see how it will work. Hopefully, so, and um, then put this on. We can see where it should sit because there are two screws there. I mean screw holes. So we're going to have to lift up those flexible cables. And in that way put it over. So, and of course the magnetic, the MRR thingy should come there. The wires around here. And uh, this one goes here. Goes this. Okay, there. Come on, little fellow. So, and then the magnetic head flex cable should also come I need a thinner tweezer here so and then it's free mm, some of the sticky tape and now we're here where is that here So all connect, I mean all flex cables are where they should be, 
right now. And then I can just add my tiny screws here. And I will begin with the one here in between the, the two components here. Just need to align it correct. There. It should sit. Oh gosh. to move this a little okay so there it should go hmm and it's it now the two the two other screws here mm hmm They sit up here. They will not really fall out. <coughs> I mean the uh, the old uh, thread lock they have used, not really thread lock. It's a kind of nail polish, I would guess. But I think it will work anyway. So, so, and uh, let's see this flex there. There's really not really much space around here. So, and now we're ready for putting in the, I think this one should sit there. Yeah, okay, fine. Time to put in flex cables. So it comes and in with that as long as they can come in. and then the next one which will be the this one here <clears throat> I think it's exciting to see if this one will work and fully in. I think it should sit there. Yeah. So and push each side of the the pins. And this one can we can get rid of and this goes there this flex need to put this tape on here so it sits where it should so 
so there and then the the last one goes in here it needs to be flipped over here So there it goes and it I'll put it in the connector. So there should be. And then one can just press on the, on the each side of it. And this tape on here again so it should be as it was and then the last goes here and I can take all this tape and put it on here and now we are back in normal order one have to realign this uh, the circuit board aluminium <clears throat> and now the uh, process of uh, solder re-solder the parts here and where did it go I have some solder somewhere here <clears throat> this is just ordinary solder so um, let's see how it will go to just put it back in again so there At this And the red one here. I think it's uh, ordinary uh, solder, which is good. It's annoying to work with the uh, lead free solder because it's. It destroy the solder iron tip. It's there, and the brown one. And then we just miss the the last three of those. So it sits there. I think it will be interesting to see if, if this. Uh, I mean, the lens can out of focus, but so there is not really anything wrong with the out of focus motor or so. And how does it sit? And it's all free down there because of the new sticky tape. So we probably can see it down there. No, it's difficult of the autofocus, but you might see. So it's free, the brush down there. So that's great. So now the uh, I can just uh, put things all back in again, and hopefully have a autofocus lens that works. So now the focus ring goes on, 
take care of the two wires here. Not to damage anything. And this one goes hopefully on here. So and then the uh, waved spring here comes on. Oh, it's really exciting. <laughs> if 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 it works. Oh, I hope so. This one goes on here. I know it's difficult to see all parts because, uh, especially on the side, just take out the wires here. So there is, and on with the. Um, with the uh, this part here where did it go it's it's there ha huh, I missed something hmm not good because I need to I of course need to put this ring on first so hmm how oh, stupid and they will sit like there. There's a guide pin here. So it's the guide hole notch. And this one will sit there. I mean it should be possible to put it on. And here it is. Now put on those uh, three tiny screws. And then I will just add some 243 uh, thread lock. And it's blue. Just need a tiny amount. Just a little. So, and then unscrew the other one and add a little. And the last one. So, and now I can add my <laughs> ring here. Oh gosh, well, things happen when working that stuff. out here so and then it should be possible to put this on here And this one should be, yeah, now it's it there. That's the cover. And how does this 
Okay. Yeah, the manual focus ring works. So this is how it looks. <clears throat> and then the three screws that hold the cover here. And there are three holes somewhere here. So come on, little fellow. And the last one. So we're almost there. Where did it go here? So now it's a uh, it doesn't have the click sound that it has before. So that's really good. <coughs> I just want to um, let's see possible to get the uh, the wires here under the I mean out of the hole here I could I mean I could actually let it sit there no it has to go under this uh, has to go through this tiny hole, but it might be possible with a tweezer and another tweezer. So they just like sewing <laughs> with wires. There's the other one, hmm. and it works pretty good. So that's great, because then <coughs> it will uh, interfere with the uh, with the scale here, as you can see. So that's great. So let's continue with the with the reassemble of the lens. So the, haha, <laughs> no, no, not yet. Because we missed some fork here, which is for the zoom. Of, of course, there are two screws. So load the screwdriver with one, one screw before you put in the fork. <coughs> Uh, because it will make it easier when putting it in. And of course we also need to put on the the zoom ring. Where did it went? Here. So all the way over. I mean it doesn't really matter where you take it out but it was just uh, so you not break anything. But let's, let's put this uh, fork in here and see how it will go. Hmm. Okay, it's easier to put on the fork first, something like that and then add the zoom ring then lift it up a little and so there it goes move the zoom ring a little and then <coughs> add the tiny screw here There shouldn't be, don't tighten it yet. 
because uh, I'll just put the other screw in first because if I had tightened this the the brush maybe would I mean break a little bent a little so then tighten it there and there so it is and now the uh, three spaces comes in different thickness and there is a guide pin over here that I just put it on so so it sits like that and then you see the zoom is also working really good as it should just need to see where the uh, with the aperture is actually going in uh, difficult to see on the camera mm, no. oh gosh where did it went oh here just need some Okay, that's tricky. I mean, really tricky, because <coughs> there are two pins down there, and we need to push the pin here um, a bit. Is it possible to have some movement here with the? Um, see no it doesn't do anything I mean you have to set the zoom on 70, 70 yeah and then there are two pins that you actually if I can do it down here there are two pins in there in here so one need to push one pin they sit like that right now so one need to put one pin away and put it through it because then we'll sit between the two pin it sounds a bit crazy but so it is so uh, hopefully it uh, will uh, work maybe they is therefore they set in the repair manual just uh, hmm. that uh, one should take out the back lens group but I think it's a bit overkill to do that so I'll just try to do it that way here and it might work Of course, the spacers here sit a little loose, but one could actually, just to make it easier, simply, um, no, I'll just add them and see what's going on, what's, if I can do it. I was thinking about putting on some uh, thread lock here on the t three spacers. So they would stay there, but uh, I think it might not be, maybe be a problem. One just have to align the pin here. I know it's difficult to see, even for me. So there, and gosh, it's difficult. Yeah. Hmm. 
Hmm. I need some torch. Where's my torch? 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 Let's go. There's not much space to 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 Orion put it in mm, there. Okay, not really. It has to sit between and then. This ring cannot be moved. Yes, of course. This need to be pushed that way. Lift a little. No. There and there it is. Okay, so one need to push it in, and uh, whew, wow, it works <laughs> to um, to actually uh, put it between the two pins and push the longest further and put the pin in between. And then it has to move the the, the aperture. So, and in goes. <coughs> no, we need some thread lock on this screw. There and next one. Wow, oh, really good. So hopefully the aperture, I mean, <laughs> the uh, autofocus will work proper. Interesting. So gently tighten them. No need to over tighten those. And then the uh, small tube here goes in with the three screws around and there is no need for using any thread lock on those
they will sit fine without. <clears throat> so and the so we are almost there. <laughs> And almost ready for testing this lens. It will be exciting to see how or hopefully where's the last is over here somewhere. So, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, all you need just to put this on, the contact, <clears throat> and it was towards the, where did it go here? <clears throat> and the white wire should stay on here. Let's do it like that. So it's facing correct. And uh, so this one goes. So there and the last wire. So it there, and then the this one can be put on here. One just needs to push those wires a bit up here so they are not doing anything. Maybe it's possible to put them there. Difficult. <laughs> Can it just go there and there? Or maybe it's not the purpose. I think they are not meant to be there. Okay, let's see how it will go. So now, my screwdriver, and then the last two screws before testing. Happen here. So there it is, and let's see what's going on. And hopefully, it will just 
do the testing here on my camera. <clears throat> Pretty heavy lens. So now, and it it feels much better. It's so much better. So let's see how it will go all the way. If it can focus, yeah. There. There are too many things in the way. So there. Okay. And the aperture is working. And if we set it to here, and okay, there, okay, just to to less light to see. I mean to focus, and it works pretty good. And if I go further away, it works pretty good. <laughs> oh, too much. I mean, that works. So how about that? That was great. So the, uh, the lens is actually working again. I mean that's pretty good so um, that was all for me this time and uh, hope you enjoy the content and probably can use it in your lens it might be the same problem but I don't know there could be many other issues so um, that's all for me bye bye